Hey everyone, I'm Ryan. You're watching 60 Cycle Hum, and I'm about to take this guitar on a bit of a reboot transformation. On a glow up, maybe? <laughs> it's already pretty great. I already love this guitar. Uh, this is my Squire Vintage Modified Jazz Master. Stock pickups, stock everything else except for a mastery bridge. I originally bought this because it had a mastery bridge and it was $300 used. I was like, Cool, I can get a mastery bridge, then sell the guitar if I don't want it for 250 and I've got a mastery for 50 bucks. Um, and then I just fell in love with the guitar and I love playing this thing. But I got offered some pickups from Lambertone. When, uh, we'll, do, we'll do the unboxing right now. Where's my knife? Scout knife here. Uh, when I offered to do my free unboxing videos, for the gear industry, for COVID, for all this lockdown business. Uh, Lambertone was in, a, Curtis was in the group that I offered it in. And he's like, well, what about pickups? You wanna do some pickups? And I looked at his stuff and I talked to him a bit about it. And I was like, you know what? Yeah, let's do it. Let's try out some pickups. Let's see if these will be fun and interesting and, you know, a fun way to mix up this guitar and do something different rather than the stock Jazzmaster pickups. And I've got the uh, I've got the Jaguar now, which scratches that Fender offset itch hard, so I don't have to worry too bad about not having you know an official offset around an official stockish Fender offset style thing. So what do we got here? It's been so long, I don't even remember the exact specifics, the exact specifics of these pickups. All right, very attractive box here. Went all out on the packaging. How does it open though? Ah, there we go. <laughs> it opens from that side. Oh boy. So one of these is a humbucker. I'm assuming this one. A four wire humbucker, humbucker there. This is the Crema bridge. Man, just great details on this thing. I'll, I'll have to put up a photo of the back of this. Came with uh, some fresh foamy inserts there to mount the pickup. And then this is the rest, the restero, rest, restero? I don't know how to pronounce that. Two wire, single coil. What else am I gonna do on this guitar? Cause I've got more stuff. Once I realized I was gonna be changing pickups in this, I started to think crazy thoughts and I hit up, uh, I hit up uh, Swope Guitars. Well, a division of Swope Guitars because they have that uh, Descent or Descendant Tremolo that I've had my eye on for a while. And uh, I actually bought it from them. I was talking to him about it, and I tried to do my begging thing as a uh, demo channel, and he's like, ah, we, we really don't do that. And I was like, well, you know what? I'm still interested, I'm gonna buy it. So suck on that. And he's like, wow, that's cool. <laughs> a lot of times people beg and then they don't buy it. But I actually want this thing. Excited about this, let's check this out. Oh man. That is a classy looking piece of hardware right there. So these, uh, they have these slots cut out so the strings can actually lower down deeper into the trim cavity. Uh, there's a common problem with the stock fender trims is that the string can rest on these big screws here on the low and the high E. And also people are always trying to find ways of lowering the string action across the bridge, that break angle, 
to get better connection to the bridge. So this allows you to actually adjust it to lower the connection of the string and it's, the string will slide down in there below the surface of it. Pretty compelling design. Really attractive looking. I think it'll go well with the, uh, the mastery look there. And so what else? Figured if I was gonna go buck wild with this thing, I might as well go all the way buck wild. I ordered a new pit guard. I intentionally decided to go kind of ugly with it. I was like, what's like an ugly decision I could make for this guitar? <laughs> so I got this green anodized pit guard off of eBay, the Abay. Um, I think it'll fit. I visually sized it up. Um, the one thing that will not fit that I had to order a replacement part for is the harness that holds the rhythm circuit up here it has different screw spacing than this. So I had to order a new harness. Hopefully that all goes together well, because if not, I'm gonna be putting this project on hold or backtracking it. <laughs> So let's get started. Oh, also, I went even further. I actually got these parts originally because I thought I was gonna put them in my Jaguar. I got these white plastic rollers that I hope will fit in here for the rhythm circuit and a white switch for the rhythm circuit as well. I just thought it would be a classy look to have all white plastic in this green pick guard. I think the, the green against the sunburst has kind of like this interesting, like 80s Soviet or like park ranger sort of look to it. I'm kind of excited to see how it's gonna look when it all comes together. It might be a huge mistake or it might be my new favorite thing, you know? All right, let's, uh, let's show off what this sounds like right now. As close to stock as it's gonna be for a while. The strings are kind of old on it. I don't have the uh, the good coated strings on there that I like now. Here it is with a little bit of reverb from the Milkman F-Stop, because of course, raise my seat up so you can see it. Here is the neck. I love the neck pickup on this thing. It's weird that I'm replacing the pickups when I already like them. But maybe I'll like the new ones better. All right, rhythm circuit. without the reverb, just to get a completely clean take on this guitar. Back to bridge. Neck. Rhythm circuit. Oh, and the middle position. All right, let's start taking this thing apart now that we've covered our bases. All right, time lapse, here we go. I've actually thought that the stock trim on this was pretty dang decent. Um, but then once I got the American Vintage reissue trim on my Jaguar, I realized how much better that trim was. And that American Vintage Reissue trim is just so smooth and so nice feeling compared to the Squire stock trim here. That's kind of what inspired me to want to upgrade this thing. Also, I just arrived at the place where I realized this isn't 
a temporary guitar for me. I like this guitar. I like playing this guitar. I originally thought I was gonna, you know, scalp the uh, the bridge out of this and then build a project guitar around that bridge. There's no reason this can't be the project guitar. There's no reason this can't start out as the uh, the project starter. Oh, interesting. Usually offsets are grounded underneath the trim plate and there's no ground wire so it must be grounded through the bridge saddle. There's not even a hole for it. All right, moment of truth. I've never had this pit guard off before. I don't know what I'm about to find. I'm a little worried about the aftermarket pit guard just because the tolerances can be so tight on these offset guitars. There's a really good chance it won't fit. Oh, that's interesting. The uh, the pickup is bolted down over the wires here. I knew I was gonna have to pull them out, but I didn't realize right away. And that screw is stripped. I might need pliers to take that out. Yeah, the screw metal's pretty soft on these. Yeah, I'm stripping this screw as well. Let's try a different screwdriver. Oh boy, kind of a stressful screw removal. It's because it's so soft. Good thing the new pickups came with new screws. Try a few different screwdrivers, see if we can get better connection. Otherwise, I'm gonna be using pliers or something to try to inch them out. Finally, man, this screw started out stripped, but man, there's nothing left of it now. That was rough stuff. I wonder if I'm gonna need different pots for this. I vaguely remember talking to Lambertone about pots. There's none in here. Little mini pots included. Probably not ideal. But I'll, uh, I'll probably just live and learn on this. We'll find out together. Bridge screws are not stripped at all. They're coming out just fine. This one anyways. My pickups are free. I'm going to snip the grounding wire because I know what that's for. I can replace that very easily. I'll remove these two ground connectors right here. All right, time to check that new pick guard. See if it even fits. Moment of truth on this guy. Some of the screw holes are a little bit off, but I feel comfortable drilling those out a little bit to accommodate a new pick guard, a different look. The pickups fit. It looks like there's room around the control cavities. I think it's a go. Let's make sure my little bracket here fits on it. Yep, screw holes line up. Everything looks good. It looks like it's getting this pick guard. Time to start moving uh, everything over. Love how this guitar never even had the plastic removed all the way from underneath the uh, the pot washers. This is new for me. I've never actually done any kind of major mods on a Jazzmaster before. The biggest mod I've done on a Fender Offset is uh, replacing the trim on my Jaguar, which is a pretty straightforward operation. I mean, this is gonna be a lot of wires and stuff like that. There's gonna be some soldering involved, not too much, but just the spacing issues is what I've been most nervous about. I've got to transfer 
all this hardware over to the new bracket. I wonder why. Oh, I'm going to have to do some wiring on that too because it's going to be. No, it should be the same. I wonder why they use a different size bracket for the uh, vintage modified stuff versus everything else. I love this little tool, by the way, this little husky thing. It's got a bunch of star wrenches in it that work for hex. It's just so convenient. Like I always know where it is and I know that it's gonna take care of me. I have a good relationship with this tool. <laughs> All right, thankfully, that was pretty soft metal, and I had the correct drill bit on hand. Oh, here it is. The pots themselves, a little bit too big to fit in there, like they're hitting the edge of it. Might need to open it up just a bit more. All right, let's see if that works. <sighs> Retrofitting uh, <laughs> these offsets can be quite the chore. It's not easy like a Strat or a Tele. Everything is a little bit different from year to year, country of origin, make and model. You can really get upset with yourself trying to find parts that work. Or you get, a, you know, get a drill like me. <laughs> and cross your fingers and hope you don't screw it up too bad. So I just had to, um, I had to file down my sanded holes a little bit better to get these nuts to fit. And now they fit. And now let's see if my little plastic deals here fit. And have to harvest the screws out of the metal ones. Hopefully those fit. These little plastic deals were kind of expensive after shipping. That's how they get you with the shipping. But I was excited about having a unique look and when I get excited about something dumb like an aesthetic it's hard to stop me from pulling the trigger on something it looks like it'll work I need to loosen them up a little bit but they actually stick out quite a bit better probably because the uh, the pit guard itself is thinner perfectionists right now are screaming at the computer their phone screen because I'm not protecting the body of this guitar right now. Balancing this pit guard on it. Should probably use the screws that came with this. That'd be smart. I was right, it was smart to use the correct screws. Go figure. I think the threads on these these plastics are stripped. I might not be able to use them. Or they're just not compatible with this screw. I think I got it. I had to uh, go back to one of the original screws because the new screw that came with that harness was not making contact. Gonna need to bust out that soldering iron soon to get hot. All right, almost lost a screw. You wouldn't think putting a screw in something would be the hardest part of the journey, but right now it feels like it is. Hmm, the screws are too loose. I think because the pit guard is thinner, these screws don't 
accommodate that. Let's see if one of the original stock screws will do a better job. I mean, it worked for the, uh, the bracket. I need to figure out some kind of spacer to remedy that. For the time being, it is what it is. I need to have like a net under me to catch everything as it drops. There we go. Put the knobs on there. And it's, uh, it's looking pretty close. All I've really got to do is separate the old pickups and reattach the new. Whoops. I gotta install this guy as well. Wrong way. This is where I wonder if I have enough solder to actually do this. If I have any solder. Where's my solder? I found some. <laughs> I'm in luck. <laughs> Let's start with this complicated switch. Oh boy. Hold on a second. I'm gonna do something kind of crazy to space out that switch. I've got these tiny little pieces of um, rubber hosing from a pickup installation. And I'm gonna to try to space out that switch to keep it from rattling around since it's loose in there. You gotta do what you gotta do sometimes. You gotta get inventive. That is unique. I wonder if anyone has ever done that before other than me. Get a picture of that. Rubber spacers underneath a switch to make it tight in a pit guard. <laughs> All right, on to re-soldering this switch. I take my time, go wire by wire. It shouldn't be a big deal, right? I have a thing. Let me get my thing. I have one of these guys and I never use it. Now it's the perfect opportunity. This is the part where I could really screw something up if I have a fundamental lack of understanding with how these switches work. Because I do, but I'm assuming just moving them over lead to lead in the same pattern will be all I need to do. For those not familiar with this channel, you might have ended up here accidentally. You might have figured it out by now, but I am not a professional guitar tech, nor is this a channel dedicated to providing expert education on how to do anything. I'm a hobbyist, and there's nothing wrong with that. I think I'm moving stuff over that doesn't need to be moved because it's for the old pickups, but I need to be able to keep track of what I'm doing. Leo Fender, what are you doing to me? If you're wondering if I feel silly for doing something fairly needlessly cosmetic, yeah. <laughs> Spending a bunch of time working on something just for a look that I don't even know if I'll like. Not that I'm hard to please. I like how every mod project I do starts out with just like a, a screwdriver and an Allen wrench. I'm like, here I go, how hard could this be? And then I end up with a table full of tools. It's not that it's hard. You can figure out how to do this. If I can figure out how to do it, you can do it too. It's just, it always ends up a little bit more involved than I originally planned.
all this work for one stupid little white switch. I still blame Leo Fender. Why you gotta make this thing so complicated? Well, that's a gloopy mess, but it is connected. Those are all solders. All right, time to replace the pickups. Oh, what did that come off of? That might be the output jack. Any instructions here? I'm assuming white is lead and black is ground on this. So, move this placeholder. Duncan designed is free. All right, next up, bridge pickup. So I could put a coil cut on that bridge humbucker at some point, if I wanted to. Probably should have decided if I was gonna do that right now. <laughs> because opening this thing back up would be a pain in the ass. Well, that's it. The pickups are in. I need to do a couple little things just to button this up. <laughs> you idiot, I put them in the wrong places. <laughs> oh, you jackass. I'm not surprised, are you surprised? Everything was going so good. Thought for sure I had it figured out. Thought I was doing a good, good job. I put it on backwards. That doesn't go on there. What did this go to? Did I just put them in the wrong place? Yeah, I wired it up right. I need to do the ground wire still. What a mess. Just a mess of wires that need to be grounded on this thing. I don't know. <laughs> having to uh, mess with the wiring on a, on a Jazzmaster is having me question my affection for Leo Fender stuff. This is a very involved guitar. And hopefully everything I just did works, because otherwise I am screwed. Let's uh, let's give it a polish before I button it up. Oh yeah. Screw down these body grounds here. There we go. It's all these wires. A, a smarter person would figure out how to tape down the wires to keep them all in place. But obviously, I'm not that smarter person. I have to figure out how to apply these foamies. Hopefully these screws are a lot better than the stock Squire screws. Where's my screwdriver? There you are. <laughs> we'll just get these started for the time being. Looks like that should work. I'm gonna put this backwards compared to the way most people would do it. I'm gonna put the screws up closer to the neck just to get a little bit more warmth out of this. 
It's also the way that the back plate is printed. Most people would put those screws right on the bridge to try to get a brighter sound, but I am often wishing for a little bit darker sound out of my bridge pickups. I wonder if I should shim the neck while I have everything apart. Just to get a little bit more height out of the bridge. I'm here, I might as well. There's a possibility I'll run out of card space on my cameras. I'm two hours into this already. I haven't even had lunch today. Good, there wasn't already a shim in here. I'm gonna use a bit of this fender card here for my shim. That would be appropriate, right? Official fender shim. Maybe a slight bit of tape for an extra bit of thickness and just to hold it in place. I'm not going crazy here, just a card paper's width of shim. I think that looks pretty attractive. Um, here's what I'm gonna do, guys. I'm gonna take a break, I'm gonna take lunch, and uh, dump these cards, and I'll come back and wrap this thing up. All right, <laughs> back from lunch, backing up these cards so I don't lose everything. Um, so let's plug this in and make sure everything works before I button it up. It looks like it all works. Unless there's some kind of unless there's some kind of crazy out of phase issue once I get it all strung up. Um, it sounds like it's in working order. So I'm gonna finish screwing these down. I'll screw down the pit guard in a couple places, install that tremolo, put some strings on this, see how it sounds. These screws are way better. It's amazing that you can like tell the difference in quality between screws. Just the way the screwdriver fits in that little Phillips slot is so much more satisfying. And it feels like it's made out of strong metal instead of that Play-Doh that was passed as metal. The screws are on that side, right? I always second guess that. Yeah, that's right. I'm gonna take the little covers off of this now, make it official. So I'm not doing that when I'm restringing it. Should I use new pick guard screws or old pick guard screws? I wanna go with old. I'm not fooling anyone. This is a this is a worn in guitar with a new pick guard. I'm fine having the worn in screws. I'm just gonna put in the ones that match up for now. And I'll worry about getting the other ones in later. I have to do a little bit of toothpick doweling and re-drilling. It really isn't all that bad. Yeah, there's really just two that I'm worried about. I think the others are fine. I got them in there. A couple are a little bit off center. But then, uh, you know, I'm kind of off center too. <laughs> See if we can get this volume knob all the way on. There we go. I might want to track down a new switch tip 
in uh, volume and tone because the rest of this hardware is so bright white and these are more of a cream. It'd, it'd be nice to have them all match, even though the dots on the guitar are kind of cream. So it, it's fine. I mean, it's gonna look, it's gonna look decent in the right light. Let's pull up the instructions for this. Make sure I'm not missing anything important before I go committing it with, uh, with screws. It says to try just doing it as it comes. I'm running out of them, but I'm gonna commit a set of 11s to this. You know what, no. Let's do 10s. It's a longer scale than the Jaguar, being a jazz master. Um, and I want to see how it handles what to me is a lighter set of strings because a lot of times the issues with uh, offset trims are that they don't like lighter strings. So I want to see if the increased break angle paired with, you know, the mastery bridge and whatnot uh, kind of defeat those issues. I like that this bridge is front loading like that. You don't have to go through the back. You just pop in really easy. Everything is gonna be, everything is gonna need to be adjusted thanks to me putting in the shim. Maybe I should have gone all out and tracked down a really expensive set of tuners for this since I'm going for this maximum upgraded squire sort of concept. I like these tuners though. I've never had an issue with them. And this guitar, honestly, in the past has stayed in tune very well. Especially considering the abuse. I put that wiggle stick through. Time to pull out the old mastery 10 to adjust this bridge. All right. To a good start. <laughs> it's tuner time. All right, all set to go. I've got it in tune. I've been playing around with it a little bit. Um, I could dial it in a little bit better, tweaking that mastery, but uh, it's good enough for right now. And knowing that I can get it a lot closer uh, makes me happy because it's already pretty dang close. So this is what it sounds like. Here is the bridge pickup. <laughs> to get it closer to the strings but it seems like it's hung up the plastic casing is is hung up on the pick guard somehow so I need to figure out how to get that uh, loose so it'll pull closer to the strings <laughs> I'm interested to see what that sounds like with distortion later on um, it doesn't sound you know characteristic of you know, the Jazz Master pickup that was in there before, but it certainly has this kind of tighter and darker sort of uh, humbuckerish sort of sound. Here's the neck pickup. This thing sounds uh, great.
considering I pretty much exclusively use the neck pickup on the Jazzmaster anyway, that's why I went for a uh, humbucker and the bridge just to spice it up a bit, just to try something different. But I'm super glad that that neck pickup sounds, you know, the way I want a Jazzmaster to sound. Spanky and clean, but warm. Not bad at all. Uh, here's the in-between sound. That's a nice combination. Pretty jangly. Here is the rhythm circuit. Well, let's compare it to just the next setting. Now the rhythm circuit. Noticeably darker, obviously. Volume control. These stick out quite a bit farther now uh, with this thinner anodized pick guard and the tone control here. Let's do a reverb test. Let's talk about this trem on here, the Descendant. I'm enjoying it so far. Um, it's a little bit quirky in that you do need to have the tool to remove the bar, but then you use the tool to tighten it in. You could put it in there and just let it, you know, flop out, but just a quick tighten and now it's in there and it's not gonna pull out. So I'll have to find some kind of tool uh, to keep in my gig bag when I use this thing to take the bar in and out so it just fits in the gig bag without the bar getting mangled, you know? But I'm very impressed with how smooth it feels. It reminds me a lot of the AVRI that I have in the Jaguar. Um, the strings seem a little bit pinched against the sides of this thing uh, here on the D string. And it looks like I am going to have to re remove one of the spacer plates to get this higher up out of the guitar because the low E is dragging on the edge of this a little bit. Before, the strings were dragging on the edge of the screws that were there on the stock one. 
So it's you know kind of you know, a similar issue. It really won't affect the stability of this at all, but I like the looks. I like the way it feels. It's adjustable, so I can fix that. It looks good with the mastery on there too. The, uh, the pick guard, I mean, that's purely a taste thing. I'm looking at it and wondering what I'm thinking. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I'll watch it in post and be like, oh man, yeah, that's a cool look. But I love the look of these white switches and knobs up here. I think that's cool. I think that should be a more common thing. Let's do that distortion test I was talking about. It wants a fresh tune. These strings are new. Can you blame it? Fuzz. Not a lot to learn from there other than octave fuzz sounds cool. This is the Rev G2. On the bridge pickup. I don't know, I, I really need to get that pickup closer to the strings right now. That's the main issue. I'm not getting the output that this thing deserves. Um, but man, I really like that neck pickup right off the bat. Bridge pickup, I'm gonna have to figure out what to do about that. <laughs> Hopefully I can get it sounding better just by getting it closer because it's a little bit just too backed off right now. I tightened it down too close from the get-go. So anyways, what do you guys think? I'm excited to spend some more time dialing it in, but um, this was a good project today. I'm glad I finally got this done. I've been sitting on a lot of the parts for a while now, and um, you know what? You tell me what you think. What do you think of this project? 
What do you think I should have done differently? What do you think I should do differently? I mean, I can still make changes to this. Um, I'm looking forward to reading all your comments. And uh, you know what? Thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe, dislike, leave me a rude and nasty comment. Support us on Patreon. You know, buy a shirt or something. Click the links. Use my affiliate links if I've got them down there. I know I do. And stay grounded. Bye, everybody. Back to bridge. <laughs>